Hey, good morning everybody, it's Mike, and thanks for jumping on here with me this morning as we continue a conversation about the most important question you're gonna have to answer in your career. And if you can't answer this question, things are gonna get tough. And that is, who, who is gonna buy and sell homes with you this year? Like, you need to be able to tell me, and it better be pretty specific, and if it's not, you better have a ton of money to market yourself. Who's gonna buy and sell homes with you this year? What I'm trying to do this week is like give you some examples, not that you should emulate what they've done, but to give you some examples of what people have chosen that it's worked for and how they came about choosing that. So today I'm gonna give you five examples, okay? Number one, you already know Bob Clarkson, right? So Bob focuses on FISBOs and expireds. Uh, that's fine. That's one way of growing a real estate business. It's not the only way. It's just one. That's Bob's way. Kim and Liz work together as partners and they focus on a, what well, we typically call in this business a geographic farming strategy. Okay, so they work their neighborhood, which is a pretty big neighborhood with a pretty healthy average sales price. It's, it's over 1,200 homes. So that's a large enough group of people to generate enough business to support them during the year. I mean, if it was like my neighborhood, my neighborhood's 49 homes. Uh, we might have one sale a year, maybe. Kim and Liz, they're gonna have 20 to 25 sales a year in a normal year. So there's enough there at a high average sales price to support their business. But see, I don't think it's really geographic farming. I know that's what we like to call it in this business, but I don't think it's that. I think it's really more of a networking strategy. And their networking group just happens to be the people that live in their neighborhood. Because if you spend any time talking to them, they're going to tell you in its most simplest form what their entire strategy is. They need to get to know everybody in the neighborhood and the people they don't know are very unlikely to choose them when the time comes. So they need to get to know everybody in the neighborhood. The, everybody in the neighborhood needs to know them and then they work to establish themselves as a top of mind credible professional. Maybe the top of mind credible professional. But people have to know them first, right? That's just a networking strategy, but their network is the community in which they live in, okay? Claire Williams. Claire focuses on open houses, which I think is an awesome target audience for Claire. It really fits her personality type. She's really good at it. It's just a, it's just a natural thing for her. I don't even know that she thinks she's implementing a strategy, so to speak. I think Claire's just being Claire, and it works really well for her. But then again, I don't really think it's an open house strategy. I think it gets back to more of a networking strategy. And I think Bob and his FISBOs are more of a networking strategy. Those are just the people that he's chosen to network with. And I think if you go talk to Bob, he'll be the first one to tell you, hey, when I call people today, I'm not calling to set a listing appointment with them. That's way down the road. It's way down the road. It's not now. Every once in a while, it'll be right away, and that just means I got lucky. I have to keep contacting them, keep staying in front of them over and over again so that they'll remember me. No, they're never going to remember him that he happens to implement his follow-up touch with them about the time they became ready to actually list their home. And because they think all real estate agents are the same, pretty much the next competent agent who doesn't fumble over themselves that contacts us is probably who we're gonna agree to meet with. Why? Because we think all agents are the same. Bob's. Yeah, Bob will tell you it's FISBOs and expires. I just call it networking, and that's his group of people that he's networking with. Kim and Liz are just networking. That's just their group of people they're networking with. Claire's just networking. That's just her group, very specific, very defined group of people that she's networking with. Makes sense? 
Hmm. Now, Nicole DeSantis is actually pursuing a strategy that she does call networking. <laughs> See, the others call it something else, and they may or may not realize that what they're really doing is getting to know a large group of people and staying in contact with them in a relevant way over and over again, which is networking. Nicole actually calls her networking, and she'll go to networking groups. RIP will do something similar, networking groups, like a BNI leads group, or a chamber of commerce events, or certain other professional groups that get together with the ex entire intent of professionals getting to meet each other and swap services. That's what it's all about. The others are doing a networking strategy, they just might not call it that. Nicole actually calls her that, her strategy that, and it works well for her because she's a young, personable young lady and she's trying to meet other professional young ladies similar to her that might want to buy their first home. Now what you might say, what Nicole's doing is a first time home buyer strategy. Yeah, I mean, kind of, but what she's really doing is a networking strategy and within the large group of people that she's exposing herself to over and over and over again, uh, there are first time home buyers in there and she relates well with those people, she will resonate with those people, it's very likely that they will choose her when the time comes because they know her and they feel comfortable with her. Does it make sense? Okay. Now, tomorrow I want you to tune in because I'm going to tell you about what I think a revelation that Steve DeNino and I had. Yep, Stevie D. And yesterday in a coaching session, I think we might have uncovered something that I think Steve was excited about. I know I'm excited about because when the natural fit appears, when, the, when truth is spoken to us, we just know it somehow. It's like, damn, that's right. That's what it is. And I know we're all looking for that. If you'll join me on Wednesday's call, I'll tell you about Stevie D's and his. For right now, get your little fanny out there and make it happen for yourself today.